Hi, I'm Sam, and I'm a volunteer with Together Well, a nonprofit that helps connect mental health professionals with their communities to provide mental health workshops. I'm continuing our new series called Meet Together Well, where we introduce you to some of the awesome people that help make Together Well possible. Here's a look at my conversation with Dr. Eric Jensen, who currently serves as board secretary for Together Well. He's also the director of mental health at Fraser, which is Minnesota's largest provider of autism and early childhood mental health services. I hope you enjoy it. How are you doing, Dr. Jensen? I'm doing great, Sam. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. Um, I was hoping to start, you could uh, explain a little bit about your background in mental health and how you originally started working in mental health, and then what led you to uh, to getting involved with Together Well. Great. Um, well, I'm originally from the Twin Cities in Minnesota, and I, uh, I went to undergraduate at University of Colorado in Boulder and studied psychology there. And um, from there, I really had some different choices to make about where, where my path was heading, whether to kind of go down the business world or uh, continue in psychology and mental health. And so I um, started working at a psychiatric inpatient unit with teens and kids in Minnesota and really um, loved it, loved helping um, people and really enjoyed the work and knew if I wanted to continue my career that um, I would I would need or I wanted to pursue um, more education and that's what led me to um, go to earn my doctorate, moved out to the San Francisco Bay Area and studied at Palo Alto University um, and I worked in community mental health there and then uh, with um, family and growing our family with our daughter and having extended family back in the Twin Cities, um, the path uh, led us from California back to Minnesota where I'm at now. Cool. Those are some good spots. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you explain a little bit about what makes the, the discipline and the study of community mental health different from other, other specializations within mental health practice? Yeah, I think, you know, community mental health to me is really, um, and it really touches on, on some deep, just personal values and things that are really important to me is, um, serving the underserved in our community and, and really looking at it in many ways as kind of a safety net service as it relates to um, uh, mental health where, you know, looking at where there are gaps in care and really trying to um, fill those gaps for, you know, people who need the services the most. And so that's really how I view um, community mental health. And, and I think also just be, you know, uh, being innovative and really trying to be responsive to the needs of clients and individuals and communities at, at large. So I'm really um, drawn and, and really fortunate to be able to work in community mental health. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And I think um, younger people who it seems like is a population you're familiar with, I think they're probably people that um, could really benefit from from having some really accessible mental health services um, that might come in different forms. And maybe, maybe you can speak to that a little bit more. How, before we talk about that, how did you originally get involved with Together Well? Um, well, I'm, I had the privilege of working in community mental health with Dr. Michelle Haley when I lived in San Francisco oh, cool. in the Bay Area. So we were um, colleagues and we, really, we um, just shared the same passion for the work we worked in um, schools together. And um, I, I just loved working with her and uh, she reached out to me probably about three years ago and, and asked if I'd be willing to serve on the board and, and didn't have to think very hard about it because I just really enjoy working with her and, I, and um, the way that she articulated and has carried forward the mission of uh, Together Well made the answer of yes very easy for me. That was um, something else I wanted to ask you. What was your initial, what were your initial thoughts when Michelle asked you to become a part of an organization that was going to specifically uh, strive to provide workshops, workshops that uh, focused on mental health? Yeah, well, Michelle um, shared, you know, some, some really personal experiences just with her family and how um, even in the medical setting, how, you know, a lot of things weren't accessible, even from a, how things were communicated in education. And, and it really um, resonated with me in a lot of ways. And I even think personally, you know, part of the reason why I studied psychology in um, undergraduate, you know, part of it was I wanted to help people. But the other part was I really 
I wanted to help myself and, and uh, live a better life. And so I think um, the education that I received, I was able to um, employ personally and has really benefited me on a very personal level. So I see the benefit of sharing what, what um, folks have learned who've worked in the field with the broader community um, and really making that accessible. And so I think that really spoke to me um, personally, professionally, um, through through Michelle's passion and examples is why. And I think the other thing about therapy or other mental health services are, you know, they can be really intimidating to engage in. You're coming in, you're, um, you know, sharing some really difficult things, which is incredibly important. And I am a, I'm a therapist and I'm a firm believer in that work. And, you know, education can be a really nice starting place. You can find you know, meaningful topics that, that um, you want to learn about and have amazing takeaways that you can apply to your life. And you're also not necessarily putting yourself, you know, in that vulnerable place or that place where you might be a little bit more ambivalent or re reluctant to engage in. So I think education is a great way to um, start. And then from there, you know, hopefully, um, if, if and when needed, people take the next step to engage in um, other forms of mental health um, care and treatment. I think the other thing that I love to do if I can is whoever I'm giving the workshop to, and I think with young kids in particular, really trying to involve them throughout the presentation, but even in preparation for it. So really wanting to make sure that it's going to uh, meet their needs, really understanding what, what they're trying to get um, out of it, what the most crucial kind of questions are and then I think with any good workshop and for for kids perhaps in particular really having some tangible takeaways that people can um, use you know the next minute or the next hour really making it hit home they're not alone you know there uh, you tend to workshop and there's a lot of people who are struggling with the same thing and if people on the uh, in the workshop who are asking questions that may be um, you had yourself, but but were maybe a little reluctant to ask. You're learning from um, one another, and I think, um, and you're learning from people who are real experts in that yeah. area, which is incredibly, um, which is incredibly important. I can say, as a as a psychologist and somebody who studied um, clinical psychology for a really really long time, you know, you can know a fair amount about a lot of things but we you know together while we really um want our presenters to really be really be experts and and focused in those specific areas so i think um you'd really be working with and getting to hear from people who who know their stuff intimately and have been studying it um in a very focused way for an incredibly long period of time how much is um being vulnerable like you mentioned and being willing to share something personal um how much is that a requirement of the workshop or participating in a workshop and how are you going to miss out on anything if you are someone that doesn't necessarily feel comfortable sharing something personal like that yeah i think it's it's not at all a requirement i think um you know just to show up and be uh be open to learn i think and that's not even necessarily a requirement, but I think that that's a helpful, helpful ingredient to making it the most um, meaningful experience that it can be. Generally in clinical psychology, the byproduct of really great and rigorous research is a very dense research paper, which is amazing. Um, unfortunately, the content of that is not incredibly accessible to the broader um, community. So I think we do um, there is a huge gap in taking our learnings, which are so important, and making them accessible and engaging to the broader um, community. And I think that's a huge, that's a huge issue, a huge challenge. I think even in clinical practice, so like therapy or other um, mental health modalities. I think just. Um, being good about uh, not using jar jargon and making, you know, educating, we call them our clients or our patients on, on, you know, what's going on and really 
that collaborative approach is also missing, you know, so I think education throughout the, the system is, is crucial and it's a, it's a gap for sure. Why, I guess I'm wondering about the need for something like Together Well, where you have a workshop tied in with what we just talked about. It seems like, um, in my mind, this is going to become a trend um, in medicine in general, people being able to access information that maybe they, they couldn't as easily ahead of time. Um, and it seems like based on the, the care uh, practitioners that end up leading some of these workshops, they are in a pretty good position to bring that, that information that might have been um, a dense research paper that was hard to understand. They're bringing that information to people in a, in a digestible way. Is, am I right that that seems one, to be one of the main benefits of having something like this? Absolutely, you know, and I think um, um, in many ways, rightfully so, sort of as a, a mental health provider, we can also become sort of this broker in the care of um, our clients or families. And I think even moving where we're really providing education to empower the public to make, um, you know, educated and informed decisions as it relates to their own mental health and, and mental well-being is incredibly um, incredibly important as well. And I think that's where the, these workshops and educational opportunities can really um, be beneficial and helpful for um, those who receive them. How, going off of that, how else do you see mental health care and the way that we view uh, mental health in general? How do you see that changing over the next, say, five years? And where do you see Together Well uh, fitting in? Yeah, I think, you know, we've seen some, in my opinion, some positive trends in mental health over, over my lifetime, for sure. And I'd say even over the last 10 or 20 years where I think there's less stigma around it. I think people are, um, you know, able to identify it and talk about it more, which is, um, which is great. I think moving forward, because people are, um, because hopefully there's less stigma around it, there's more awareness around it. We just, there's in, probably because there's more stressors and loneliness and isolation and all of those things that are, we're really facing, um, there's just, a, there's gonna be more and more and more need and demand for mental health care. So I think we're gonna have to get really creative and innovative in terms of how we're gonna get um, that care out to folks. So I think one is um, workshops, I think, will always need um, some of the more traditional ways that we've provided mental health care. I also think, you know, there's a lot of um, work being done with technology and ways to um, make some services scalable and accessible as well. And I think, I think we'll, we'll continue to see advancement there. I think we just want to be sure that um, what's being developed is um, based in science and best practice and informed by um, you know, research and, and, the, and the, right, the right type of mental health information and knowledge. I think one thing that I would just say in my, even ex my experience providing therapy and mental health services is you know, a, big, um, a big part of what people get out of that. You know, a lot of times people come in and talk about how they feel like they're alone and they feel like they're the only ones experiencing this or they feel like they're like, quote unquote, um, kind of going crazy or whatever it might be. And um, one of just the, the interventions that, that really in, works well is, is education and is normalizing what we normalizing. I don't even know if it's a word, but it's a word <laughs> in our field, um, people's experience to know that they're not alone. And I think like we were talking about the workshop experience where you can get a large group of people who are maybe going through similar um, type things, I think really um, doesn't, again, replace long-term ongoing mental health services, but I think can really, um, you know, meet that need and, and provide that type of intervention, which I find to be um, incredibly helpful for so many people that I've had the privilege of working with and, and their families as well. Sure. Um, lastly, is there anything that you're doing right now that makes you feel good? 
you feel like you have any uh, best practices when you're feeling down that really help you, I don't know, change things up, get you started? Yeah, well, yeah, for me, um, so I live in Minnesota and it's, um, it's actually heating up. It's negative one degrees. <laughs> so it's so cold. It's really hard to go outside. I love being outside and um, you can, you get bundled up and go outside, but right. it's like working out of a bike. So getting on the uh, bike and doing some of that is really fun. And then I have some young kids and so um, a five and an eight year old. So I'm making time to just spend time with them build some Legos or do some artwork or yeah uh, some, some real therapy like right there is some Legos absolutely <laughs> and Legos for everybody I right think just do yeah. your mind and snap some Legos together it doesn't sound like the worst uh, half an hour spent no it's pretty fun <laughs> right. um well I can't think of anything else thank you so much for for taking the time to speak with me Dr. Jensen I really appreciate it yeah my pleasure Sam thanks so much um, for those of you viewing, please check out Dr. Jensen's workshops on the Together World platform. Uh, the link will be posted uh, below the video. And for more information about our events, please visit our events calendar. Thanks for joining us. See you.